morning or I guess it's a good afternoon. Anyways, it's a pleasure to be here. As you notice, we don't have too many people here today because uh, most of the people are in uh, the camp today. And we have also uh, special things. As you know, you're aware of now, our Pastor Chris Johnson been ordained this afternoon. I believe it's four o'clock. So some people go in, so which means I won't hold you too long here. So you could all get ready. So you won't blame it on Ben if you don't get there on time. So may God bless you as uh, some of you go in there. But pray for him because this is a very responsible, very tough job to minister church, uh, as you know. I know myself, you know ourselves. So may help God to help him, praise God, and pray God for him so he could really dedicate himself and then to help us to get closer to God. It's a real pleasure and also a uh, daunting task to be here because any time I try to, to preach here, I'm always nervous. I don't know why. Uh, because yet in my in the business, uh, I talk to people, do conference, everything. I never I always feel comfortable. When it comes for here, the reason I'm saying that because some of the things I'm going to say here, uh, newsflash, I may not, maybe my life is not quite to that, so, so I'm talking to myself. That's what I'm trying to say to myself. Uh, the text been read here uh, about uh, James, the prayer. And the title is A Miraculous Escape. But before we get there, let me tell you a story. Uh, the story was told about the chaplain who was summoned to a particular room in a hospital where he was serving. And as he entered that, there's uh, a lady who was there, and then he, the lady said to him, listen, are you this chaplain? And the guy said, yes, I am. Uh, the lady said, well, I want you to pray for me to get healed. And I don't want any Bambi prayer, I mean, light prayer. I need a real good prayer because I want to, be, I want to get out of that bed. And poor chaplain, he didn't know what to say because the lady was very serious. He said, I want you to pray. And after you finish your prayer, I want to be healed. So come here. If you're not ready to pray for that, you better go. So what do you say to a person demanding such a request? To be healed as soon as you finish to pray. And the person waiting for you. Well, what happened, I'm sure, that lady have seen too many uh, Sunday morning religious uh, uh, shows. Because this is where in, the, in these services, people make a mockery of this, of this passage found in James 5, 15, that uh, we just read. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. I mean, there's nothing really ambiguous there. You pray, and God heal. And, uh, and sometimes, this is where this morning we had that conversation in the Sabbath school, different interpretation of the text. So we have to be careful sometimes how we turn the text. And so the question is for you now, have you ever seen those TV preachers in the morning? The deal is whatever you ask, you should receive, right? It will be granted to you, which is true. But the thing is, they, they say, well, if let's say you didn't get it, it's because you have too many sins in your lives. And the best way to get your prayer answered, guess what? Is to send money to them, and by Monday morning, everything will be okay. Yeah, whatever your problem is, you'll be fine. But remember, you have to send them that money. What a travesty, what a tragedy to see they take a text like that and let the devil use it to, and then to weaken a powerful tool, which is the prayer. Yes, Elijah, and we have so many, and this is how the devil works. We have so many people really like Elijah. He was a man like, he likely prayed and God answered his request by holding the rain for how many years? Three years and six months. It is true, God could prevent 
It is through our sins, excuse me, can prevent God to intervene in our lives. But this happened, and, and if we insist to indulge in it and not acknowledge it by asking for forgiveness, at this juncture, it will be impossible for God to change you. You know why? Because you don't ask for forgiveness. That's the only reason why, because God said, as a matter of fact, Jesus said, he comes to do what? To heal the sick. So if you are a sinner, this is it. God's open, Jesus' arms is open, wide open for you to come in. So he will answer your prayer. But the only reason, though, if you don't confess them, yes, because remember this, prayer do not change God, but prayer transform us. That's right. God doesn't change. You is going to change. That's what's going to happen. And so we have to have faith in Christ to accept his will in our lives. This is what happened here. When we have faith in Jesus, we have to accept also to let him direct our lives. This is hard, especially when we're asking him to heal or to provide for the basic necessity of life. Scripture has the power to lead us to a different way of living, the way of faith. The stories like Abraham and Isaac should guide us to trust the promises of our God. Stories like Israel and the walls of Jericho should lead us to act on God's word and leadership in faith that he will move in powerful ways to destroy our seemingly unsurmountable obstacles. And the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus should guide us to a life of service to our God who would give up everything just to have restored relationship with us. This is how God is almost, I was reading that, God is more anxious to forgive you. God is more anxious to change your life than you and I want to. Do you realize that? He's, wait, he, he, he's he, he, almost excited to do that. And when he realized we refuse to do that, he's sad because that's his job. He wants to do it for us. And you know, I read a lot of books on prayers. And these books are bound with testimony of our God marvelously answers people's prayers. It is very thrilling to go through these pages and read these accounts. Indeed, in my own personal life, I see God's providence more than I deserve. However, God also can decide to answer our prayers differently than we thought. Case in point, I remember I had a problem with one of my kids. I won't say the name because I didn't ask, it. I didn't ask permission. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> All right, we had the problem, he had, that person had the problem, and so we were trying to pray God. And I'm praying God, my wife and I were praying God sincerely, and somehow God intervened. But guess what? I was mad. I was complaining. And I said, ah. so my wife, I would say sanctified wife. It's pretty good, amen, to have a sanctified wife. He, she told me, well, didn't you ask God to intervene the way he wants? I said, yeah, but why are you you're so mad? God did that for you, didn't he? And suddenly it dawned on me what happened to us sometimes. We're asking God to intervene, but with uh, a map in our mind. You see, this, this, I want you to intervene, God, but I want you to intervene this way. I want you to intervene the way I see things. And when God answers our prayer, we say, whoa, we say, wait a minute. I didn't ask for that. But yet we ask God to intervene. You see the problem we have? We have a good God, isn't it? And I was mad. And, I couldn't, and after that, to tell the truth, I have to go and kneel and ask God for forgiveness because I was so mad to say, God, I'm sorry. I asked you to intervene in something you did. I know it's not the way I wanted you to intervene, but now I realize when I asked you something, 
I have to put myself in your mercy and then do it the way you want it. And this is what's happened. Because you know, like Paul, things could happen where we ask God to intervene in our lives and God will say what? In our first, second Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, at the end of the day, God told Paul, what? My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now I want you to notice something. Why Paul was praying for? He was praying God to heal him for what? To go and have good time? No, he was to preach the gospel. He was to do his work. You see my point? You may be asking God for something real, but God has a way to do it. And God said to Paul, no, 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 no. I want you to stay with it. No, as a matter, in fact, no, God said, no, I don't want you to be rich. No, Ben, I don't want you to be a millionaire because if you are a millionaire, you won't serve me. No, Ben, I don't want you to have the, a, 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 that, that kind of car. You don't have money to pay it. And, but for us, and the problem is, that's easy. Well, God doesn't want me to have a car. But when you pray for God for your rent, you pray God for your kids to be healed, for somebody to be healed. When you pray God to have that tuition fee and it's not coming, it's not coming. Now, this is hard to take. And sometimes God will say, my grace is sufficient. You see why? Therefore, we have to put ourselves we have to align ourselves with God's will. And guess who's going to do that for us? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what? In 2 Corinthians, he said, the Holy Spirit knows what? What's in God's mind. So God is going to transfer that to you. So when we are praying, the Holy Spirit will help you to ask what God wants for you. I don't know if you guys understand exactly what I'm saying. This is a powerful thing here. When we're praying, if you don't have the Holy Spirit with you, you cannot ask. You, you think you know what you want. We think we know. Hey, I need food in my fridge. I need, I need money to pay for the rent. I need money to pay my mortgage. But the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 it's not what you want. It's not what you want. And therefore, when we submit ourselves to God, we have to let him work in our lives. And when he say, my grace is sufficient, Believe me, he will help you somehow, but not the way maybe we think. Is that story should discourage us to pray for ourselves or for others? No. The Bible encourages us to do that. We need each other, and as the song goes, I need the prayers of those I love while traveling over life's rugged way. I want my friends to pray for me. We need that. This is... Now... The story about the miraculous okay, intervention God did is found in Act 12, 5 to 18. This is a wonderful story. That story describes our attitude when it comes to prayer. God answers our prayer, but we are so focused to ourselves, we cannot realize that when God answered that prayer for you. See, the trees in our life prevent us to see the blessing of being children of God. We can't even recognize his acquiescence to our prayers. We can't, you can know that. And the story we're going to say here is interesting because it's like a roller coaster of emotion. It's sad and happy and encouraging. So let's turn to Acts 12, 5 to 18. That was the story of Peter. The story serves as a great example of life lived in faith and in doubt. Now what's happened is this. Paul, Peter was in jail. And you know the Roman jail is not a jail right now. Where you could add for stake or you could really go and strike. Those guys when they put you in jail, they put you in jail. Okay, they tied you, okay, your hands, your feet, you're there and in the dungeon, dark, everything. But guess what? Peter was there, what he was doing, by the way? Yeah, isn't it cool? The guy was in jail, he was sleeping. 
You see when you, you will put yourself in God's hand? Hey, God, they put me in jail. You have my life in your hand. I can't find that mortgage. I can't find the money. Here I am. Here, I'm on my back waiting for you. This is what Peter was doing. Me, I would have been in jail. I'd be yelling. I'd be crying. I'd be doing everything. But my man was sleeping. And while he was sleeping, what happened? An angel came and woke him up. He didn't know that. He thought he was dreaming because it's, it's unreal. He finds himself, all the shackles was loose, and then get him out of, of the jail. So what happened is this now. While he was there, he came at the door where what? The people were praying inside. For, to Peter to be delivered. When Peter knocked at the door, what happened? A young lady came running out and he saw, she saw Peter. What he did? She did run back and tell the people, hey, here is Peter. And what did they say to him? Come on, sit down. We're praying for Peter right now to be delivered. He said, Peter is at the door. Come on, girl. Why are you disturbing us? It not ever happened to us when we're praying. You're praying God for something. God answered the prayer, but you're still at it. Why? Because our no we cannot see further than our nose. We're so selfish. We, we want things. You say, God, yes, I want that. I'm praying for you to intervene. I'm praying to help me. But this is what I want you to do. God said, no, this is not what you want. And you're still praying again. You're still saying, hi, God, it's not good to you. But yet God opened everything for you. You can see it. So finally, Peter, knock, 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 knock. Finally, they went there and said, oh, hey, look at that, Peter. And he entered there. So sometimes God answers our prayer, but we don't even realize that. Is that happened to us? And so... While we're doing that, maybe it's not so much to ask God to answer our prayer. Maybe to ask God to open our eyes, our spiritual eyes to see when those answers are right. That's why maybe this is the hardest part, I believe. This is what happened to us. We, are, we keep asking. There's nothing wrong. We ask, we ask. But we never stop to see when God answered those prayers for us. Because you want God to come up with a... I'm mean, in a big way. Now I see God. I pray for my son. I pray for that lady, for my sister or my brother. He's healed. Thank you very much. But you don't see one God. If that person doesn't heal, but he gave that person strength. He gave that person faith. Not to deny him. To stick to Jesus. But we don't, no, no. God didn't answer me because that person didn't heal. It's not that, brothers and sisters. It's not, if you see, you see prayers, we're having problems with prayers. When we pray, we have to stop and ask God to show us how he answered the prayer. Because I'm 110% sure God always answers prayers. We may, not, we may not like what the way he answered that, but he answers us all the time. As a matter of fact, uh, let's go back to... Uh, Psalms 143. I was struck at a thought I never considered before. David prayed, For your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring my soul out of trouble. Verse 11. David was so certain that God would answer his prayer that he then testified this. In your steadfast love, you will cut off my enemies and you will destroy all the adversary of my soul. That's what David said. He was confident God was going to do it, so he already thanks God for that. Now comes the new thought. David ended his prayer with the words, For I am your servant. Verse 12. Psalm 143, verse 12. B. David ended his prayer with the word, What? For I am your servant. You see, here's the thing. There's some step. You have a problem. 
you pray God. You have to anticipate God answer your prayer. But also, you have to know you are what? The servant of God. Now, a servant of God, that translates in Hebrew, uh, Ebed, that's a word in Hebrew, meaning someone who is a subordinate to a master or owner. Why would David think that the Lord was more like the, to answer his prayer for protection if he was the Ebed of God, if he was a servant of God? For this reason, I realized something. When David says he's a master, what a master is responsible for the servant? Is responsible for what? For his servant, for the life, for everything of the servant. A good master provides security and provision, supply the needs of the servant. The servant has not to worry about how he's going to find his food. The master look after that. The only thing he have to do is to obey. The only thing he have to do is to obey and the rest will come. And so, if prayer is in fact a partnership, then I want to be in alignment with God. For here is his promise to us. In uh, 1 John 5, 14, 15 said this. This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. John 5, 14, 15. Whatever we ask. And when you are the servant of the Lord, whatever you ask the master, he will answer you. But sometimes the master sees something higher, the master is in a higher plane than us. God sees certain things will happen. And I remember uh, a few years ago, we had a problem in our family. My wife and I, we pray God. And that didn't happen. You know, after almost 10 years, I realized why God didn't answer that prayer. 10 years it took us to find out if God had answered the prayer, we'd have been in big trouble. 10 years. So when you are the servant of the Lord, brothers and sisters, I know it's hard, and even for me talking here, because sometimes we need something. We're not asking God too much. We're asking him something very simple, something for our lives. But God said no. And I know it's hard. But when you have God, Jesus, as your master, do it like a David. I know God, you will answer my prayer, because I know you are my servant. In the meantime, too, I want to do it according to your will. And God's will sometimes, brothers and sisters, as you know, is not the same one with ours. Because God sees far. And we will see exactly today. After five minutes, I don't know what's going to happen to me. So I don't know. And therefore, we have to have that firm confidence in Jesus. To know when you ask him something, if he doesn't give it to you, seemingly doesn't give it to you, he may have a reason. But look to see around to see if he didn't answer that the other way. Because, as I said at the very beginning, in 1 Corinthians 2, 10, 11, say this, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit search all things, even the deep things of God. So the spirit will help us to ask what we want. And God, I would assure you, God will answer that prayer because God is anxious to make our life easier. God is anxious to make you have a life in accord with him. And so, let's do that. Asking Jesus to help us to have a spiritual eyes to see around us, to see what God will do. And so, the prayer should be the first impulse rather than the last resort of Christ's people. And I know sometimes they say when we are in trouble, when everything fails, ask God. I know that. But before everything fails, ask God. Maybe he will, he will spare you a lot of trouble. The secondly, when the church prays as a body, God accomplishes great things in this world. Thirdly, God's people must pray together. 
Fourthly, we must not give up on people if they don't respond immediately. Recognize God's answers when we pray. Ask him to open our eyes to see his doing in our lives. And do not forget to acknowledge God for what he did for us. Because sometimes we just take it for granted. Thank you very much. I move on. And we never say, God, please, please do that for me. Do. And then God did it. And you know, I say, hey, because I'm smart, because I know what to do. You go to get your mortgage and you get so many problems. And you don't know how that, big, that person happened to give you that mortgage. And you say to your friend, oh, no, I, I talk him. I know how to do it. No, no, it's God who did it for you. And then so acknowledge that. However, let me say this. God will not grant our every request. He will not take away every pain. But he will always be there to gently wrap us in his arm of love. Wipe our tears and give us the strength and motivation to, our life, to live another day. How are you going to respond to God when he says no? Are you going to push him away? Or are you going to pull him tighter that you, uh, that you ever done before and let him wrap you in our, his arm? And so, we go back to that text we read this morning, if, uh, John James 5, 16. But this time I'm going to read it for you from the message. Make this your common practice. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you can live together whole and healed. Because the prayer of a person living right, now I'm saying that again, the prayer of a person living right with God is something powerful to be reckoned with. May God bless you.